Well, good morning everyone and what a privilege it is just to be able to share a wee word or a wee thought with you this morning to leave with you and after much prayer and thought the the subject that was laid on my heart was the question are you subjecting your life to the plan and the will of God am I are we fully seeking God in every situation in our lives in every decision that we have to make regarding ourselves, regarding our family, regarding work choices, regarding anything that we have to do in our life, any decision that we have to make, are we fully seeking the Lord on it to be sure that it fits in with his plan for our lives? Now, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 says this, For I know the thoughts or the plans that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The Lord's will for his children is only that everything should work out for our good. Now, he has not promised us that we would not go through pain and suffering and trials, but we know that the plan of God is perfect. So we should be seeking to discover through his word through an inner conviction, through prayer, what it is that his will is in each situation in our lives. Now we're encouraged by a God who stirs us up to move ahead, someone who believes that we can do the task that he has given to us and he will, he will be with us all the way. He has promised never to leave us, never to desert us. So his plans for us are full of good, full of hope, and he knows the future. He will go with us, whether it be an easy task, whether it be a difficult task, whether it be something just in everyday life or something more complicated. No matter what the situation is, God has promised that he'll never leave us and never desert us. Now, when we seek the Lord, we will know, we will know with a surety that his will is made clear to us. We will have that inner feeling of knowing he gives us that peace of knowing that we are in his will now the bible is full of examples of how god stepped in to change plans that had been made by man and the responses vary greatly now one of the greatest men of the bible was the apostle paul and in acts chapter 16 and verses 6 to 10 we read of Paul's second missionary journey. Now those few verses I just want to read to you. If you want to follow along in your Bible, Matthew, sorry, Acts chapter 16 and verses 6 to 10. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Mysia, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavoured to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Do you see there when Paul got the word, from God when he got this change of plans to what Paul thought he was acting in the will of God he was acting in the will of God but he thought he was following the plans that God had for him but Paul, God stepped in and said no I don't want you to go there I want you to go into Macedonia immediately it tells us there in verse 10 you see Paul's response after he had seen the vision after he had seen the vision immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering he had that assurance in his heart that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them there's one man's response to a plan that had been changed Paul probably had it set in his head where he was going he knew he thought where he had to go but suddenly the Lord stopped him he said no go into Macedonia and Paul's response was to go immediately now, the Holy Spirit told Paul through this vision, 
you and I in our lives may not have a vision like that, but we could have an inner conviction if we pray to God and ask him to help us and to guide us on big decisions or smaller decisions that we have to make regarding our life and regarding our future in God's will. Well then, if we pray to him, he will answer. He will give you a peace through an inner an inner feeling. You'll get an inner conviction if it's wrong. You know, God's word can speak to us. When you study his word, you can get the answer that you're looking for. It could be through anything. It could be through a hymn in church. You could have this feeling God has answered you. God has told you what you must do or must not do. So there, there are so many ways that he can speak to us. Now, sometimes when God steps in and we have maybe prayed to him and we have said, Lord, give us the answer to this question, whatever it might be. Sometimes the answer that we get may not be the one that we either expected or that we wanted to hear. It may not be the answer that we wanted to hear. Now that's where the test comes in, in your faith. That's where the test comes in, that you are willing to go with God's will, not with your own, with God's plan, and not with your own. And of course we should. But there have been many examples in the Bible as well, where things have happened, and men of God have gone their own way. Now, one of the best examples we have been studying recently in our own church has been in the book of Jonah, where Jonah gets the word from God and he runs away. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Now, when the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He rose up to flee from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He tried to flee from God. He tried to run away because he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Nineveh where he would have seen the people of Nineveh as his enemies. In fact, he didn't even want to see them getting saved. Now, that is so wrong. All of us, all of us can see things that happen in our world today. Things that have happened have been done by so many evil acts. But it is not ours. It is not ours to, to take vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We leave that in God's hands. But it is our place to pray for those people and to pray that they will see the great error of their ways and that they will seek repentance and salvation. Now, if you look on down, chapter 3. If you look at chapter 3, just the first three verses or the first part of verse 3 end in there. And it says, The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto the priest sorry, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. You know, the answer that we get may not always be the one that we want, but the one thing we can be sure of is that the answer that we get, when it comes from God, it's the right answer. And we know that when we follow what we have been guided and shown to do, that we are living our lives in the plan and in the will of God. That's what he wants for us. He hasn't promised us that it'll always be easy, but he has promised us to be with us and guide us and help us. And we know that in following his plan and in following his will, well then we are doing our little part in helping in the spread of the gospel, the Great Commission. We're doing our part here on earth. You know, it says, Solomon said in Proverbs 19 and verse 21, There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. We can plan whatever we want. We can think that we are planning whatever we want. But it's only God's plans that will stand. Ultimately, it's only God's plans 
that will stand, that will hold tight. So I want you just to remember that, you know, it's sensible to make plans. There's nothing wrong with make, making plans. You know, there's an old saying that goes, fail to plan and you plan to fail. There's nothing wrong with making plans in our life, but it is wrong when we don't subject it all to the will of God because we're not promised tomorrow. We're not like the rich fool. I'll rip down my barns and build greater. And the Lord said, you fool tonight, this night, your soul will be required of you. So we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but it's okay to make your plans, but subject them all to the will of God. Now, God may disrupt our plans with his own. Our challenge is to listen and to obey, knowing that we can trust God, knowing that we can trust him. If we submit to his will, we will find ourselves fitting into his purpose for our lives. And so I just trust today that you bear this thought in mind and that if you are facing any big decisions in your life at the minute, even the smaller ones, that you'll turn to God in prayer, you'll ask him to guide you and you'll ask him to help you and you'll ask him to show you exactly what it is that he wants you to do because he can see the beginning from the end. He can see it all. He knows what's best for us. And so this day I trust that that's what you will do. So if we could just finish off with a little prayer. All-knowing God, give us the faith to listen when our plans are disrupted, knowing that you have a greater purpose for our lives. Help us this day to listen to your all-knowing voice and give us that peace in our heart, Lord, that when we know that you have spoken and we know that we are living in the plan and the will of our dear Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I pray, I pray that this day you will be with each one who listens to this, with their families as well. Bless us all, Lord. Stay with us, guide us, keep us, and hold us fast until that glorious day that we come home to see and to be with you forever, to heaven and to home. I pray it all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.